Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views as Sam I.B. began to be doing political commentary for the media speaks, and it is time for the massive Fukushima update. Uh, the last time I posted, I ended up with thousands of views on the first one and almost none on the second. Um, the election coverage, the results of the primaries and things have run into certain Fukushima nights. And I think that's led some of you to miss the second show because the thumbnail on it is for the election. Um, make sure you watch the second Fukushima video. Hit subscribe and hit share now because we're going to get directly into it, my friends. Um, this was from the, um, uh, the Ashahi Simbun, as I butcher the uh, Japanese language. 10% of TEPCO's frozen soil wall at the Fukushima site is not working. Now, friends, this is particularly bad news because they are nowhere near the point in cleanup that they would need to be in in order for it to be even remotely okay that this wall isn't working. Um, for those of you that don't understand, it's they're storing toxically radioactive water in barrels all over the property at, at uh, TEPCO, and it's leaking. Uh, they used rubber seals, for instance, when they made them uh, real smart. I mean, hammering in that logic. Um, this wall was to prevent a lot of that leaking and seeping that we've seen. It's the uh, technology that you would find used when they built subways, for instance. A lot of times they will freeze the ground. Um, even with that, though, never anything on the size and scale that you would need at this power plant. It's bigger than it looks like it is. This is bad. There's an image uh, for those of you on screen share. The solid frozen soil wall that TEPCO, which is GE, so if you invest in GE or if you are in a mutual fund that GE is in, get out of it. Quit funding them, they'll quit existing. Um, they're trying to create its stricken Fukushima 1 power plant is falling short of expectations. They're a great wall here. Oh, I hope Trump has better luck with a wall. TEPCO said on May 25th, its attempt to freeze the soil around the crippled reactors to decrease contaminated groundwater has hit an unexpected glitch. The utility said it has been able to freeze the soil for about 10% of the points it surveyed. Even though temperature remains especially high, there is the possibility that the soil will never freeze. So, I mean, 10% already they they just they just were heralding this as the greatest creation since sliced bread the project involved the construction of 1500 meter long hair circular frozen soil wall around the number one and number four reactor buildings the utility inserted 1568 pipes to a depth a depth of 30 meters one meter apart the idea was that each pipe would then freeze the soil around it once liquid or minus 30 degrees circulated inside of the cylinders. To date, $315 million has been spent on this. TEPCO started to freeze the soil in late March, and the goal at first creating an 820-meter long portion, mainly along the side of the plant facing the sea. According to TEPCO, the temperature of the soil around the pipes was lower than zero. In other words, it's not working. This matters greatly, friends, because this there's, there's more to decommissioning this, even if it hadn't melted down, than just um, you know, hitting a button and you're done. This is imperative that they get this done because this is seeping into the ground, and the ground is going to get into the groundwater. And then the groundwater gets get into the food and they send food all over the world. And America isn't testing the food very well at, or at all that I know of for radioactive poisoning. You don't know. You know that you should avoid foods from uh, the West Coast for sure. But you don't know. I mean, if you drink sake in a restaurant, God only knows what you're drinking. It's not tested. Yes, probably okay. That's a great word, isn't it? You're probably going to be fine. India today, uh, it's in today. 
In Fukushima, even robots can't survive the nuclear mayhem. The company that runs the Fukushima plant sent five robots, this is dated May 26th, to ground zero, and not a single one survived. Incredibly high radiations in the block causes heat levels to rise and it melts the robot's wiring. For those of you that don't know, this is how radioactivity kills you and uh, gives you cancer and lessens the quality of your life. In a nutshell, radioactivity cooks things from the inside out. Um, that is a cellular level, a very basic level on, uh, on life, on carbon-based life forms as we are. Um, it cooks you from the inside out. Well, it does the same thing to robots. It cooks their wiring. It is so radioactive that they can't even get near it. And all of this is seeping into the sea, and their little savior wall here isn't working. A tsunami triggered the earthquake. Of course, we know that. We know what caused the meltdown, melt out, and melt through. But even after five years, there is still a tremendous amount of cleanup work left at ground zero. Yeah, it's going to carry on for about the next 25 to 30 years. The Tokyo Electric Power Company, again, TEPCO, GE, get your money out of it. Uh, they run the plant, and they've managed to clean up one building, but is still struggling to do some of the other buildings, which have burnt fuel rods. These fuel rods are nothing but chunks of radioactive waste weighing hundreds of metric tons. Yeah, and you could, you could literally perish from being around them for even the shortest periods of time. Um... In the two years for TEPCO, it, excuse me, it took two years for TEPCO, it says, to design the robots for the job of extracting melted fuel rods. And according to TEPCO's head of decommissioning, Niahiro Musura, the heat levels due to radiation are so extreme that it simply melts the robot's wiring. I mean, I'm assuming they haven't even been able to put the shield in lead, which I don't understand why they can't, but for some reason they haven't. Japan has been trying out various methods to stop the radiation from damaging the area further. One such method, method is building ice walls, where we just covered how wonderful that went. A million metric tons, one million metric tons of irradiated water is being stored on the site and is pumped in to cool down the reactors. After they get rid of this water, friends, they have nothing to do with it. They put it in tanks, which leak. Disposing the radioactive water is still a challenge for TEPCO, and its storage tanks have already leaked some of the material into the ocean. Yeah, about 300 tons per day. After TEPCO's robots not surviving the heat levels of radiation, it's a place for no man or machine. Toshiba has developed new robots for picking up the fuel rods and to clean up the scene, which previous robots had failed to do. In other words, it's so bad it is frying the robots, and we are nowhere close to getting this plant in any way that's going to do anything but uh, continue to jeopardize our health. Friends, you're looking at the Patreon site. This is something new I've done. You can donate to the show here. Uh, currently, I have absolutely no one doing it, so I'd appreciate it. Um, the goals are on there. I'm trying to make this what I do for a living. You can pause it. You'll see here quite clearly what I'm talking about. Uh, $5 a month, I'll promote your favorite charity. Uh, $50 a month, it's actual ad space there, your business, your whatever. Uh, guys, here's what we've got. Economic collapse, Michael Snyder. All of a sudden, fish are dying by the millions all over the planet. Now, it amazes me some of the things that get on the news. An idiot lets their kid roam into a gorilla cage. The kid's dumb enough to roam into the gorilla cage. They shoot the gorilla, of which didn't make me happy. But it's all anybody wants to talk about is this damn gorilla. Meanwhile, in the world where things matter, why are millions upon millions of dead sea creatures suddenly washing up on beaches all over the world? Maybe because they're not worth as much as a gorilla. I don't know. Who cares about a fish? It is certainly not unusual for fish and other inhabitants of the oceans to die. This happens all the time. But over the past month, we've seen a series of extremely alarming death incidents all over the planet, it says. As you will see below, many of these mass, mass death incidents were have involved more than 30 tons of fish. In places such as Chile and Vietnam, it has already gotten to a level where it has started to become a major national crisis. Now, this is exactly... 
what we predicted. Well, I didn't predict it. I just I commented on people that did. Um, it's what we predicted all along here. The radioactivity due to the jet stream does not always distribute evenly. But in time, with each wash, things happen like harvesting and um, shipments of food from one area to another. The burning of radioactive materials that sends it into the air and moves it all over uh, at a disbursement far greater than the original content had. Those kinds of things do slowly seep into areas that are nowhere near Japan, which is why I'm in Ohio telling you how important it is. Chilean beaches are covered with dead animals. Compared to other countries, Chile is almost, is almost all coast. And the geo the geographical fluke means that the country is known for its beautiful beaches. But the reputation may be on the wane thanks to a new site in Chilean shores, dead animals, and lots of them, heaps of them, in fact. Um, it says the South American country's beaches are covered with piles of dead sea creatures, and scientists are trying to figure out why. A lot of us have a good idea why, but no one will listen to us. This is also in Vietnam. Um, soldiers have been deployed to bury them. There's so many. Marius of fish have washed up dead along a 125 kilometer stretch of the Vietnamese coast. And also in Asia, keep in mind, Fukushima, at least 35 tons of dead fish, also in Asia, imagine that, appeared on the lake in southern China, leaving residents stunned. Of course, in Bolivia, on the other side of the world, thousands of dead fish washed up on the shores. Just before they died, some of the fish had just hatched their eggs in Lake Ale in the central Bolivian city of Cochabamba. Now, friends, this is bad. In India, 65 tons of fish. Cambodia, 70 tons of fish. It could be a number of things. But uh, one thing for sure, I hate to be the one to uh, point out that uh, this is exactly the uh, kinds of things that you find in the book of Revelations, and people call you crazy if you point it out. Woe to the fish gate. Um, he does mention Fukushima here, thankfully, which is uh, why he's one of my favorite authors. Of course, humanity has done much to destroy the planet as well, and we continue to deal with the aftermath of the Fukushima nuclear disaster. I do think that it is very interesting to note that most of these mass fish deaths have happened in nations that border the Pacific Ocean. He's not claiming that that's what led to all of it, but it's certainly a factor that would increase anything else that's going on because the the, 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 the life, or I should say the health of the fish, of the tuna, of the things that you're eating, if you're dumb enough to eat it, they haven't found any tuna that don't have some level of radioactivity in it, and you ingest that, and it never leaves your system. You can do things to get uh, some of it out, like with bentonite clay and things like that. Shout out to Giselle. Guys, RT mega tsunami may strike and devastate Hawaii within 50 years. Now, I do a lot of things on Fukushima. I also cover world nuke news. And friends, this matters because of the amount of nuclear power plants that could be affected, as well as what this could do to upsetting... Um, any ongoing cleanup over the next 30 years in Fukushima, because this is a prediction with a span of 50 years. So it's, it's three out of five chance here, and that's if they are lucky enough to get Fukushima cleaned up in 30 years. It says there is a possibility that within the next 50 years, a large earthquake will hit Alaska and generate a tsunami that would cover Hawaii, leaving the island in utter devastation. Researchers at the Uni of Hawaii and Manoa have found that there is a slight but potential chance of about a 6.5-12% 9 plus magnitude earthquake. Now, a 9 is what struck Fukushima. Well, this could be uh, doomed for the Aleutian Islands. And it says these are events, they don't happen all the time, but there is a chance of them, and our effort here is trying to define what that chance could be. In other words, there's a warning here. There's a chance to at least brace for it. They didn't when the warning was given to Fukushima, and the result was the death of millions. And that death, uh, by that I mean of the disease, of the cancer uptick that we are seeing that is going to leave millions, I should say, devastated from it. 
<clears throat> look at the uh, thyroid cancer rates and thyroid problems in Japan and the East Coast of uh, the United States right now. We covered much of it last time. <clears throat> Michael Snyder, End of the American Dream, June 7th. FEMA will hold a drill to prepare for a 9.0. There's that number again. This time from the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake and tsunami. Now, the problem with this is this would very likely be nuclear depth for the entire northern hemisphere if this went badly. And I'll tell you why. Um, you can't just drop the nuclear power plant into the ocean and assume that it's going to be okay. This would be a nuclear disaster of untold proportions. You have to understand what this earthquake would do beyond just the shaking and quaking that it causes. Starting on June 7th, FEMA will be conducting a large-scale drill, and it has been named the Cascadia Rising that will simulate the effects of a magnitude 9.0 earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone and an accompanying west coast tsunami dozens of feet tall. Excuse me, friends, I'm <clears throat> dying of thirst. According to the official flyer on the event, more than 50 countries plus major cities, tribal nations, state and federal agencies, private sector businesses, and non-governmental organizations across three states, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, will be participating. In addition to the Cascadia Rising, U.S. Northern Command will be holding five other exercises simultaneously. Turbo Challenge, uh, Special Focus Exercises, and Joint Logistics over the shore. What's all that mean? It means, thankfully, that there's some preparation going into what could be the most devastating earthquake in American history. This would be a deal killer, friends. Uh, absolute game changer. We have never seen such a disaster before in all of U.S. history. Do they know something that the rest of us do not? Yeah, that area is alive. It says it's funny how they are preparing to deal with the effects of a magnitude 9 earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone because that's precisely the size of earthquake that this author warned about in an article back in March, and we covered it. The San Andreas Fault in Southern California gets more headlines, but it shouldn't. For one thing, the direction it moves, San Andreas cannot create a tsunami. It says if a magnitude 9 earthquake were to strike, the immense shaking and subsequent tsunami could cause damage to the scale that is hard to imagine right now. Perhaps that's why FEMA feels the need to prepare for such a disaster. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm glad they are. Because it says, uh, you'll remember that... Um, the movie San Andreas, and San Andreas, they talk about the fall. He said it would have been much more frightening, according to Oregon State University professor, uh, if they had to mention Cascadia instead, because it would create an earthquake 30 times worse. Friends, this is not good news. It said, um, by the time the shaking has ceased and the tsunami had receded, the region would be unrecognizable, Kent Murphy said, who directs FEMA's Region X Division, responsible for Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and Alaska. Our operating assumption is that everything west of Interstate 5 would be toast. There's no mention here of nuclear power plants, but I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out what that would do. That, that friends, would be the end of this, is what that would mean. Um... Interesting, I'm glad they're at least preparing something. Maybe they can save at least a few people by via evacuation. Dailymail.co.uk and the South is sinking. Giant chunks of the Earth mantle are falling off and causing earthquakes across the southern U.S. And more are coming wars researchers. Why does this matter? Because we've read, we've covered studies on this very show where an earthquake could give structural damage and failure to certain dams that would create the equivalent of a tsunami on a nuclear power plant. And you understand why. I, mean, I don't mean it'd be like a tsunami, but it would be a massive wave washing over a power plant, which would have the exact same effect as a tsunami on the power plant, not on the whole region, of course. The southeastern U.S. has been hit by a series of strange, unexplained quakes 
Most recently, 2011, of course, the magnitude 5.8 earthquake near Mineral, Virginia, and it shook the nation's capital. But researchers have been baffled as to why. Now they believe the quakes could be caused by pieces of the Earth's mantle breaking off and sinking into the planet. So why don't we build nuclear power plants there, shall we? A new study found pieces of the mantle under this region have been periodically breaking off and sinking down into the earth. This thins and weakens the remaining plate, making it more prone to slipping, and that causes earthquakes. Now, friends, when you have wise people telling you not to build nuclear power plants, they're the reason that they are wise people and telling you this. The study was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Solid Earth. It's uh, based on distinct variations in the geometry and thickness of the lithospheric mantle and bounded lithosphere. We suppose that piecemeal declination has occurred beneath the region. In other words, the Earth is falling into itself. He just wants to be wordy. The region has been built over the past billion years by periods of a, a creation, and when a new material is added to the plate, the rifting, the plates will split apart. Isn't that just remarkable news? I'm going to go to screen share so you can look at this map of uh, where it's affecting. We were intrigued by what was going on, and we can link these activities to structures deeper in parts of the Earth. Friends, that is not good news at all. According to viral, pieces of the mantle have most likely been breaking off from underneath the plates since 65 million years ago. In other words, it was never a good idea to build the nuclear power plants there, but we did anyway, thinking we knew everything. Guys, Sticker Junkie, they are a proud supporter of the show. And when you go to Sticker Junkie, make sure on checkout, whatever you do, put in correct use, the correct use. You're going to get amazing stickers, and then you're going to get a savings on those amazing stickers because you listen to the show. And that, friends, is double good for you because when Sticker Junkie sends you stickers, you will go to the mail and you see them, the vibrant colors popping out of you. You're going to be thrilled, friends. Uh, moving on, we've got, uh, we were talking about the San Andreas Fault. We're going to stay with it for a minute, even though it's not as bad as Cascadia. <coughs> it is the one more likely to cause immediate problems. And it looks like that's exactly uh, what it's aiming to do. San Andreas fault locked, loaded, and ready to roll with a big earthquake, uh, experts say. And that's that's bad because, again, this will trigger nuclear meltdowns and uh, issues with one of the highest food-producing areas in the entire world. This is from Rangong Lin the second the southern california section of the san andreas fault is uh, of course lock loaded and ready to roll this is from the national earthquake conference in long beach the san andreas fault is one of california's most dangerous and is the state's longest fault yet the yet for southern california the last big quake was 1857. yeah well they didn't have nuclear power plants in 1857 when this 7.9 monster hit what that would do now would be catastrophic so it's been quiet since then, a bit too quiet for Thomas Jordan. He's the director of the Southern California Earthquake Center. The springs on the San Andreas system have been wound very, very tight. And the Southern San Andreas Fault in particular looks like it's loaded and ready to go. He said it as his opening keynote talk. Other sections of the San Andreas Fault are also far overdue for the big quake. Um, Further southeast at the Cajon Pass, um, San Bernardino County, and uh, the fault has not moved substantially since 1812. It says the problem, scientists have observed that based on the movement of tectonic plates, the Pacific plate moving southwest on the Northern American plate, earthquakes should be relieving about 16 feet of accumulated plate movement every 100 years. Yet the San Andreas Fault has not relieved stress in a century. Now, do you have any idea the amount of dreadful damage that would be incurred to the entire West? And by that, I mean, like, you have the Middle East, you have the West, Western countries, the entire West. 
friends, you, we've got to get these nuclear power plants defunded, shut down, and decommissioned as quickly as possible. We have got to quit opening new ones. We have got to quit using the lie of global warming as an excuse to keep building these things because I'm telling you, I'm giving you the facts, fact after fact here. The science is in. These are death sentences waiting to happen. They have your name on them. Uh, this was a quick story. I just wanted to get to it. I've got two left, including the dumb of the day. This is Washington Times. This is not the dumb of the day. Seven-year-old who donated hair to cancer patients get cancer diagnosis. This is awful news. Um, a seven-year-old Cala. California boy. Now, am I saying that all cancers in California are caused by Fukushima? No, but Fukushima is on the time scale that we have been preaching for five years, ticking up cancer rates in Oregon, in the West Coast. We covered all the deformities that we're seeing all over the West Coast from Fukushima in the uh, last posting. Right here's another one from California. Coincidence, right? A seven-year-old California boy who spent two years growing his hair to donate to kids with cancer has received a cancer diagnosis of his own. Vinny DeSultos of Rosebud said he was happy to donate 13 inches of his blonde hair to wigs for kids, despite being teased by other children during the growing process. Well, I have my hair long, they can bite me. I'm, I'm in his favor. Now the boy is battling stage four. Friends, that's bad. There is no five. Stage four cancer that is spreading from his knees to behind his eye. I didn't even know that was possible. It's causing him to squint and meditate before it. Basically, what they found is that he has a significant growth on his hip and then a bone around his eye and behind the nose and around the cheek on the right side. The boy's father, Jason DeSaltos, told Fox News. Doctors are still trying to identify what type of cancer the boy has, his parents says. Now, they've launched a GoFundMe page, which I'm going to be showing here. Uh, that's just awful news. Again, the West Coast cancer is going through the roof. There is $456,000. They're trying to get $500,000. Um, hit screen share. That's, that's the hero right there that really, really needs our help. And, uh, friends, that brings us to the dummy of the day. Now, the idiot, the dummy of the day here is sort of just a dummy for mankind in general. And I'll just uh, let this ride behind me as we do it. Zero Hedge, British General says a nuclear war with Russia in 2017 is entirely possible. That is only because we have allowed ourselves to become very stupid and very complacent. Most people do not truly understand what even a very limited nuclear exchange would actually do to the region and the world as a whole due to things like the jet stream, food production, um, immigration. This would be a disaster of health and a disaster of economy. To even talk about it is madness. With tensions between Russia and the West at post-Cold War highs, the former NATO, NATO deputy military chief is now saying that a nuclear war with Russia over the Baltic nations in 2017 is entirely plausible. Yeah, if you're insane. Um, he said at the RT, our General Sir Richard Sheriff from Britain served on the second highest NATO military office in Europe between 11 and 14. And he's written a fictional book about a nuclear war with Russia in 2017 triggered by a dispute on the Baltic nations. While the story is indeed fictional, Sheriff said the story is based on an entirely plausible scenario. And uh, the way he lays it out, Russia would occupy uh, the Ukraine to secure the land route to Crimea area and then invade the Baltic nations. Well, a lot of that could actually happen because NATO is encroaching on Russian lands when they said they wouldn't when the Cold War ended, which is warmongering from the West. And then you have the equally problematic Putin who has helped create a terrible refugee crisis due to their, his handling of ISIS. And he is not a man of peace. He buzzes 
ships in international waters trying to provoke them. It's international waters they're allowed to be there. Russia trying to start a fight. We have two very evil sets of leaders, Putin's regime and Obama's regime, if you will. Both very evil, vile people with their fingers on the nuclear button. And that is your massive Fukushima nuclear world update. Do me a favor, um, go to Patreon, please donate if you can. Uh, go to the hot, uh, hot uh, the correct views at hotmail.com. That's better because I don't have to filter the money through the site. They just give it to me. Uh, all the money you give me for the show goes to the show. Goes to the lights, goes to I'm not going to be taking vacations on the money you send, but I would appreciate it. I am trying to grow this show and make this much more frequent. And I need your shares and subscriptions and support. And I will keep giving you the best commentary that I can. Based in facts, so hit share. Good night, friends. God bless.